What's going on everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the FCS Dynasty here on NCAA 06 now featuring the NCAA Next Mod. That's right boys, we finally got it up in there man and I am really excited about this mod. Want to give a special shout out to that mod team over there. They, they actually did help me out with getting this mod onto my pc so that i can show it for you guys here man so i'll leave their socials uh linked down as a pinned comment uh if you want to go ahead and check them out on discord and twitter but we got an exciting episode here for you guys today we are going to be looking at these preseason polls that top 25 we're also going to be taking a look at the preseason all american list that heisman watch list the top five players who are perceived to most likely win the Heisman Trophy here in year number two. And then to wrap things up, we are going to take a look at all of your guys' custom prospects, where they ended up, if they made it into the series, as well as take a look at the games that are going to be played in week number one here as we get closer to season two gameplay action i hope you guys are really excited for this episode if you are make sure you go ahead smack that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel and with that let's go ahead and hop right into it the preseason top 25 what's that going to be looking like to start year number two of the fcs dynasty so we'll get things started with looking at the notable teams that are in this preseason 119 poll. We got UNLV and Eastern Carolina on top. They're the number one and number two teams in the country. But we also have North Dakota State here. Despite a brutal first round exit, they are going to be seen as the preseason number three team in the nation. Although not as talented last year. This was a B plus overall team last year. They fall to a B minus, and while they did end up with a top five recruiting class, they are also going to end up, you know, they're going to be relying on those freshmen to step up right away. This is a team, you know, that was supposed to dominate the FCS in year number one. They had the highest talented team on paper, and then to get removed in the first round is not a good look for that football program. Granted, they did end up losing to, to the national champions, so, I mean, at least there's that caveat, but that's not an excuse, especially for North Dakota State, when the expectations are just a bit higher for an FCS school. So, again, you know, they're going to have to really, uh, you know, look for players that are going to fit their system well and develop those players, uh, because as of right now, while a B-, minus. Um, actually is the, one of the highest ratings in this dynasty file still they're not going to be dominating as easily so they have to remain focused during the course of this season speaking of the defending champions kent state enters in at number five in the country they go with a c plus overall team c minus offense and c plus defense they will be seeking an opportunity to go ahead and defend that national championship we'll see if they can do it as for James Madison, they made it all the way to the quarterfinals before being removed by Utah State. James Madison coming in with a C overall squad this year, a C offense, and a D plus defense. They also had the number one recruiting class last year, so I expect to see those freshmen step up right away and help the veterans that are on this roster maybe get taken over the top and compete for a national championship potentially at number eight we got georgia southern which of course you guys already know are led by ikeda woods ikeda woods you know is a special player but is this recruiting class that maybe helps them you know get them over the top have some more supporting staff because it did feel like in i believe it was the round of 16 that second round against north texas it was the whole team against ikeda woods it seemed like at times and you know it it showed on the field georgia southern did not look good and they were bounced because of it they do get a high ranking though montana in the semifinals though they come in number nine in the country in the preseason poll coming in with a d plus offense and a c minus defense defending that pac-10 conference title as well as 
the farthest quote unquote real FCS team making it uh, into the FCS playoffs. They were bounced in the semifinals by Kent State. So we'll see how, how Montana follows that up. They have a really good football team coming back. As for New Hampshire, New Hampshire had a pretty sour end to their football season last year. While they were pretty electric and received a lot of attention in the regular season, they flamed out in when it mattered the most. You know, you're talking about a program that did not make it into the conference championship game because they did end up losing to James Madison late in the year. And then you also end up getting upset by, I believe it was Tennessee Tech that ended up holding the upset in the first round. So they were supposed to be the very team that's supposed to play against Utah State, but that didn't happen. And yeah, unfortunately, uh, New Hampshire ended on a sour note, but 13 in the country going into year number two. Speaking of Tennessee Tech, they did get a revamp logo as they are coming out really good year they end up winning the big 10 conference last year they did also end up doing is they won against new hampshire in the playoffs before they were blown out uh lit up like a christmas tree by utah state in the second round but they built some momentum and they are coming in number 21 in the country as for tennessee state they will be looking to make their very first playoff appearance this season tennessee T state coming in as the 24th team in the nation they have a pretty solid team c overall squad d plus offense and a c minus defense that should make them competitive within that big 10 conference one of the teams that did make it into the playoffs last year but is outside of the top 25 is the delaware fighting blue hens they got a brand new look i love their logo by the way shout out to that mod team but not as talented as some of these teams that are in that top 25. D plus overall, D plus offense, D defense. Uh, it'll be interesting to see um, if they can repeat themselves as Atlantic Division champions. They did. No, they actually won the ACC. That's right. They beat James Madison, but they lost in the first round to SMU. We'll see if they can find their way back into the playoffs. McNeese State was another team that made it to the playoffs last year, but starts itself outside of the top 25. They have a D-plus overall squad, D's across the board offense and defense, another team that could struggle to make it back to the playoffs again. Speaking of such teams, Southern is out here as well. They are the champions of the Big 12 Conference. They looked, you know, they had a fun time. You know, they it was a fun team to watch. But they did get bounced in that first round last year to Georgia Southern. Uh, they come in at number 34 in the preseason rankings with a D-plus overall football team. So now we go ahead and check in on the defending Ivy League champions, the Brown Bears. Now a two-star program, but deep down in there, although the Ivy League, they did not, they were actually the only conference that did not have anyone ranked in the top 25 at any point. They come in this year with a D overall squad, D plus offense, and a D minus defense. Not the best team in the world, but you know, when it comes to that Ivy League, as long as you win your conference, you can get into the playoffs that way. And Brown is at least in the position to do that. I don't know if they'll be able to do much damage when they actually physically get themselves into the playoffs, though. So we take a look now at the Heisman watch list for this year and we got some notable players coming back. A couple of guys that were in that finalist list last year. Barrett Aston, he had an absolutely incredible season last year. Ends up with over 1,800 yards rushing, 21 touchdowns to go with it as well. And he also chipped in six receiving touchdowns, did some things in the kick return and punt return game. Just a fantastic player overall. He finished second in the Heisman race last year, and he's going to be looking for that title this year. As for Ikeda Woods, he was also on the Heisman finalist list for a long time, actually. The sophomore quarterback from Georgia Southern, probably one of the most complete quarterbacks in co in college football down here at the FCS level. This is a guy that ended up with, I believe, almost 2,000 yards passing. And he also ended, uh, yeah, he had 2,000 yards passing. He also had 1,400 yards on the ground as well. Just a complete quarterback. Takes really good care of the football. Uh, even though, well, 
well, he fumbled the football a lot, but he did only throw three interceptions, though. So that's the key thing. Uh, definitely deserves to be on this list for sure. Very talented football player. And that was only his freshman year. I can't wait to see what he does in his sophomore year and builds off of that. After that, we actually have a group of James Madison players. We had Maurice Gray, who was one of the most electric return men in all of college football. And then we also have the, the guy who's supposed to get him the football on the offensive end, Kenny Raymer. Kenny Raymer, very talented quarterback, ends up with nearly 50 touchdowns last year, did throw 14 interceptions. We'll see if he can cut down on the turnovers, but Kenny Raymer is a very talented football player. And the last person that's on the initial Heisman watch is John Reed. He was kind of floating around in there, and that's despite Chattanooga not being very successful last year. They ended up with a 4-7 and seven record, so not the record that you want to see, but this guy is very good. Over 2,000 yards receiving, 19 touchdowns to go with it as well. Um, really is someone that can take care of business. We'll see if he can somehow top this is going to be really hard to do 140 catches as well um hopefully we can catch some UT, UT Chattanooga games whether Chattanooga actually gets good this year or whether they're in a nationally televised game that you know they get to go up against one of the better teams in the FCS but really want to see this guy play didn't get the chance to last year because they never had any good games uh on TV or anything like that uh, we'll see if he can elevate this Chattanooga program to at least their first over 500 season. We'll, we'll see if that's the case. But what are some other players that we should be looking after this season as we check out the preseason All-American list that we know about guys such as Ikeda Woods, Barrett Haston, Maurice Gray, John Reed, and then of course uh, Kenny Raymer who actually is the only second C oh, all C all AACC person uh, Kenny Raymer, second team All-American. He's the only second team person that's on the Heisman watch list. But who else is on here that we should definitely keep an eye on for this upcoming season? First, we got to check in on John Willis, the running back from Delaware. Dude ends up with almost at least a, a thousand yards rushing, 12 touchdowns. Very good football player. Uh, was very instrumental in pulling that offset against James Madison in the conference championship game. So we'll definitely see if he can uh, make some things happen uh, on the offensive end. Uh, at wide receiver, Don Traina. Uh, the dude is smaller than me, to be honest with you guys. Five foot eight, 161 pounds. But it's not about the size of the dog. It's about the bark within within the dog. And this guy has some bark in him. 100 yards, 100 receiving catches, almost 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns. He can make things move for this Penn offense. A bright spot for what was a disappointing year for them last year. As for this offensive line, we have to go ahead and give Georgia Southern and North Dakota State their props. Both teams have more than two or more you know, offensive lineman in the first team. Uh, Georgia Southern with two with Matt Townsend, who's a junior, and then Sean Patway, who is also a junior red shirt. As for the North Dakota State Bison, three offensive linemen as first team All-Americans. Tony Paul, the senior red shirt. Brian Britt, who's a true senior as well. And then Freddie Wade, six foot six, 320 pounds, 100 pounds short of that magical weight. He's a senior red shirt. North Dakota State certainly with an experienced offensive line. As for the defensive side of the football here for the first team All-Americans, we have Leonard McCooler, the junior red shirt out of Idaho State. He comes in six foot three, 257 pounds. He was a guy that knows how to get to the quarterback last year. 91 tackles. He had eight sacks last year with a few forced fumbles thrown in there as well. Very talented football player. He's going to be seeking those double-digit sacks this upcoming season. But he's not the only defensive lineman from a smaller school. Mark Prince is in here as well. The senior out of Northeastern. Northeastern had a really difficult time last year, but Mark Prince was a bright spot in that. Despite being a little bit undersized at 227, he ends up with double-digit sacks, two forced fumbles, three forced recoveries, 
and he had a hundred tackles on the year he is everywhere for the northeastern defense he makes he makes sure that his team is in games just from his defensive prowess as for the defensive tackle position a little bit of a surprise here as we got somebody from the university of missouri kansas city the king roos with a first team all-american george watson now this is a, a surprise uh but he is it is warranted of uh, nine sacks five force fumbles he had a pass deflection as well so that's cool hofstra who actually got a logo change of uh, they had like the pr the flag uh as the logo originally uh so i'm glad that got changed uh noah dowdell the senior uh on this list as well he comes in with 12 sacks on the year uh but can also stop the run an outside linebacker we got daryl smith no surprises he did end up winning uh, a couple of awards uh last year on the defensive end a uh, great player for the lumberjacks following at middle linebacker we got melvin Cor carroll the senior red shirt from illinois state a bright spot for the redbirds who only went one in ten last year they're looking to be a little bit better this time around and he's going to be the captain of this defense uh for the redbirds and then we have the other outside linebacker rocky martinez junior red shirt out of Furman. they he was also part of that effort to pull an upset on southeast louisiana does a little bit of everything for them few sacks few interceptions couple of forced fumbles he is the all-around guy for the Furman team moving to our defensive backs we got brian terrell who did some really nice returns also has a few receptions last year he played two ways we'll see if he'll be asked to do that again or um he can focus in more on defensive side of the football but the senior corner uh looks to uh build off the incredible year that he ended up having last year which was four interceptions a few forced fumbles and had a defensive touchdown as well you love to see that it, other players in the secondary to watch out for is charles boyd the senior red shirt out of sanford the Sanford corner uh, making that first team All-American list and a little bit of love for the Ivy League as well as Robert Gray is in here too. He is a senior uh, from Princeton. Uh, Princeton uh, not winning a single game last year. They are tied with Indiana State for the longest losing streak in this dynasty. We'll see if he can help finally break that. And then wrapping out the kicker and puncher, we got Centric Floyd, the junior redshirt out of UT Chattanooga. So two first-team All-Americans for Chattanooga. And at punter, we have Cedric Bolden, a senior redshirt from Sam Houston State. The Bearcats getting their first first-team All-American. So at the second team All-Americans now, we have, of course, Kenny Raymer, who is in the top five in terms of the preseason watch list. We'll see how that ends up working out as the season progresses other players that i wanted to talk about in this second team is mike sap who was an absolute red zone threat for the bison last year well he only ends up with 20 catches last year he had 10 touchdowns half of his catches were touchdowns and i can definitely see why six foot four guy definitely a leaning towards possession he's got some athleticism to him um very sure-handed only had a couple of drops last year too uh, we'll see if they lean to him a little bit more because I think they're going to have to pass the football a little bit more often if we want to see them be, su be successful in the future. Nicole State also has a second team All-American in Travis Atkins, the six foot four wide receiver from Nicole State. D somebody that flew under the radar, to be honest. This is a guy that... He had a good year, 96 catches, 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns. Dude is a beast, but Nicole State flew under the radar last year, so we couldn't really see Travis Atkins. Hopefully that changes this year. Someone that didn't quite fall under the radar, though, is Michael Williams, the junior redshirt out of Western Carolina. He benefits, you know, having like guys like Brandon McGee throwing him that football at all times. Ends up with 69 which, by the way, very nice. Uh, over 1, 000, uh, 1,100 yards receiving, 15 touchdowns as well. Uh, definitely deserves that second team designation. We'll see if he can build off of that as Western Carolina does have a far upgraded offensive line. So, so Brandon McGee should have more time in the pocket. 
At tight end, we got Mike Knoll, the sophomore red shirt out of Sanford. This is the youngest player that we've seen on the All-American list so far, as many of the players that we see here are juniors and seniors. Very good accomplishment for Mike Knoll. Only getting here after his, after just one year of playing on the field. So good rookie year for Mike Knoll, and that, that really led him onto this list. As for the offensive line, uh, a little bit more diverse offensive line for the second team. We still have a Georgia Southern guy in Fred Miller, the senior center. That does bring Georgia Southern's All-Americans up to three, two of which being first team guys. But a little bit of diversity after that. Carlton Miller is on here as well. The senior from James Madison. Chris Stewart's here too. He's a junior from Florida A&M. And then the last notable offensive guy that I wanted to talk about, Adam Alston. He's a senior redshirt out of Southeast Missouri State doing some doing the Lord's work as a blindside guy uh, for his quarterback. As for the defensive side of the ball, Chris Spicer, the senior out of Furman, is on this list. So two defensive All-Americans for Furman. We also have John Demps on this defensive line as well. Uh, the senior red shirt out of Tennessee State. The Tigers looking for their first playoff experience. Like I said, at 6'1", 259 pounds, he ends up with a good year last year. 70 tackles, 7 sacks, a couple of forced fumbles too, and a couple of pass deflections. Had some attempts at interceptions, couldn't quite make it happen. You know how it is with defensive linemen there. Hands are made of butter. And that does wrap up the defensive line. Moving on to the linebackers, though. Edward Simmons is on here. The senior from Brown. Part of that only Ivy League team that did make it into the playoffs. Nearly pulled the upset against Rice. Uh, fell just short in that fourth quarter. Um, really good player. 120 tackles, 7 sacks, 4 forced fumbles, and 3 fumble recoveries. 11 pass deflections, though. So maybe he'll get some interceptions. Uh, usually don't see a person with this many pass deflections well, without at least getting some kind of interception. Also in this linebacking core, that's part of the second team All-American list, is Antoine Robinson, the senior redshirt from Appalachian State. Appalachian State, you know, of course, known for their historic upset over Michigan in the 2007-2008 uh, season, which was a absolutely wild year, uh, one of the wildest years in the history of college football. So we'll see if Appalachian State can convert that into this video game universe. Another All-American, though, uh, from the Ivy League for, in the linebacking core, Matthew Parham, second team All-American, representing for Columbia. A little bit undersized, though, 5'11", 227, but like I said, so it's not about the size of the dog, man. It's about if you can play. And you know how the NFL is and, you know, professional football. If you can play, it doesn't matter where you are. They will find you eventually one way or the other. Over 100 tackles, 6 sacks, 3 forced fumbles, and recoveries to go with it. No INTs, though. We'll see if he can add on to it this year. Wouldn't be surprised if he does try to declare for the NFL or, you know, go for pro leagues and and all that we'll, we'll see if that's a possibility for him uh, down the line uh, but for now working on his Ivy League education moving into the secondary now we have Derek Hill the junior red shirt out of Texas State a little bit undersized as well five foot nine and 180 pounds but you know this is a kid that has you know plenty of athleticism also in the secondary we got Antoine Moeller from Tennessee Tech part of that starting team that made it into the playoff pulled the upset on new hampshire and made it into the second round they're going to be trying to build off of that success as they seek their second playoff appearance in this dynasty so far then at strong safety we got eddie davidson the junior red shirt out of southeast missouri state five foot 11 188 pounds he is one of the best center fielders in college football and someone that you do not want to throw it towards if you're not trying to turn that football over. Rounding out the second team All-American group is Troy McCoy, the senior kicker out of the University of North Dakota. Their first and only All-American on this list. And also making an All-American list appearance is Chris Alexander, the junior out of Indiana State. 
Indiana State, despite another team, one of two teams, of course, that did not win a sequel game. It was them and Princeton. But despite that, Chris Alexander is the sole All-American for the Sycamores going into season number two. But now we get into something that I'm sure you guys are really excited about in particular, and that is where did your guys' custom prospects ended up going now? I try I did get as many of you in here as I can. Um if I did miss you, um I am uh going to uh I did save your guy and he will be included in season number three. Uh but um for I try to get as many of you at one of your top three schools, and if not, I'm gonna I did get you to best available within the overall range within either OG tier uh, for channel members, day one tier, uh, Discord, or YouTube, because it's no fun to have somebody that's like a 52 overall or something like that. Like, I wanted to make sure that your player was actually usable and actually had an opportunity to see the field if not their freshman year, at least some point in this series, right? As for the custom coaches, I thought I had a workaround for the base game not really allow me to add new coaches i tried to do something in the uh db editor but what ended up happening whenever i would try to add or remove a a custom coach it would take me back to before recruiting was finalized and i didn't want to do that um it would mess up everything that happened in the off season so uh if you were if you submit a custom coach uh what i did do is i added you as a custom player so at least you're somewhat represented as well. So want to get those two disclaimers out there. A real one apologize for that. But with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at all of the custom players that are going to be in here as true freshmen this upcoming season here in year number two. Starting at Alabama State, we got two custom players who are both going to be starting on the offensive side of football. Trey Williams, the six foot three player. Uh, he's going to be starting at wide receiver. He's going to be the number one wide out day one. Also starting day one as well. But at the quarterback position, we do have T.Y. Huntley standing at six foot five, 183 pounds. Going to be starting for a program who was ranked in the top 25 occasionally, but fell off in the second half of the season. We'll see if he can help this program bounce back. As for Arkansas Pine Bluff, we have one of the best running backs in this freshman class, Doug Rose. He is on this Arkansas Pine Bluff squad at six foot, 198 pounds. He is going to be expected to form a big free, not only with Doug Rose, but also Max Senai, as well as Jarrell Patterson, two of which who are seniors. Uh, should be a fun uh, one-two punch combination to look over. As for the defensive side of the football, Jacob Brightman is going to be starting at middle linebacker for the Golden Wires, Lions uh, at 6'231 pounds. He's going to be expected to handle a lot in his freshman year. For the Brown Bears, we have Josh McCoy at quarterback for the only Ivy League team that did end up making it to the FCS playoffs. Josh McCoy will be starting off as the backup for the Bears. Over at the Delaware Vine and Blue Hens, we have Elijah McCoy, who is the number one receiver for Delaware. Very athletic player. He's going to be a freak of nature, especially once he gets that awareness up. Dude comes in with 98 speed and also fantastic size at six foot five. I would not be surprised if he ends up uh, being one of the best wide receivers in this freshman class when it's all said and done. As for Delaware State, their rivals, Alex Zhang is going to be playing with the Hornets this year and going to be asked to start right away. The 6'2", 205-pound guy comes in 80 overall, going to come with a lot of expectations. For the Eastern Washington Eagles out in the Pac-10 Conference, we have Carl J. Fousen. He's uh, related to uh, Jonathan Fousen. Uh, as well as Jim Fousen, who is coaching at, or did coach at Youngstown State University. Uh, for those that watched that uh, Youngstown State Athletic Director Dynasty that did precede this, uh, Carl J. Fousen, true freshman, six foot six, of uh, also extremely athletic, 85 speed as well. He's going to be starting for the Eagles day one. 
going to another Eastern school, but this time Eastern Illinois. We got Ralph Rags, 6'4", 177 pounds, true freshman, and he is by far going to be the number one receiver for the Panthers this upcoming season and just head and shoulders above everyone else in what is a young wide receiver room for Eastern Illinois. At defensive back, we got Tito Chances, the true freshman for Elon. And while he is only a 68 overall, he is going to be starting right away for the Phoenix. Him and Darius Clark are going to be a one-two punch to look out for for the next four years uh, for the Phoenix uh, for those defensive backs. Now, Florida A&M was the most popular destination for custom players as there ended up being five separate guys uh, that ended up being part of this Radwar squad, a 24-player class. Half of this team is freshmen, so it is going to be a younger team. Uh, best player on the team off-rip, though, is Benito Zimmerman. 80 overall, carries 90 speed, looking to be the vocal point of this offense right away. As you go look at their quarterback right here, uh, quarterback room is not good. Not good at all. Um, so I expect them to maybe run this football just a tad bit more, but there is another running back uh, in the Rattlers room uh, that's going to be backing up Zimmerman, and that is Willie Reed Jr., who will be coming in as the backup for this upcoming season, but there is some weaponry to work with on the outside as well, as Kate Davis, the true freshman, is going to be the number one receiver for the Rattlers, going to be working alongside Greg Logan, who is a senior and a second team all conference guy this preseason as well uh, should be a very good mentor uh, within that regard now the other two people are on the defensive side of the football and one person that we do got is Tiger Aladdin who is a true freshman going to be a, a piece that is going to contribute right away for the Radwars this upcoming season and then at middle linebacker a starter Double K Williams, 5'11", 220 pounds, might be a tad undersized, but 84 speed, that's really good for a linebacker, going to be really utilizing that athleticism going up against, you know, the New Hampshire's, the Delaware's, the James Madison's of the world is going to be needed if this defense is going to turn itself around. Now, Georgia Southern does find itself with a custom, a couple of custom guys as well, uh, both of which are 74 overalls. On the defensive side, we got DeAndre Dowdell II at 6 foot and 183 pounds. And then at the tight end position, we got Chris Palmer. While not expecting to start right away, Chris Palmer going to be a very talented freshman and should contribute right away as well for this Eagle squad. For the Harvard Crimson side, we got Jonathan Cooks at the fullback position. He can also play a little bit of linebacker if need be. Comes in as one of the best players on the team. Uh, and that's the reality for a lot of the teams in this series. Uh, freshmen are going to be uh, taking the sole focus. I mean, for Harvard alone, uh, three of their top five players are true freshmen. So that's why it's really important to put together a good recruiting class early to give yourself a good advantage then whatever happens after that that it is what it is but Jonathan Cooks will be starting at fullback for Harvard as for Howard we got a couple of different guys on the team starting at the quarterback position we got Carlson Saturday he will be starting for the Howard Bison this upcoming season has some mobility to work with uh, and does have a solid little arm awareness is a big concern so he's gonna have to work on that could be some growing pains for the Bison this upcoming season. But there is a second quarterback on this roster as well. Wilson O'Donnell is also in this quarterback room. Uh, so it should be a constant competition between O'Donnell and Saturday. Um, both talented quarterbacks that do have potential, but both need to uh, really adjust to the speed of the college game because it's a little bit different than what was seen, you know, in college. As for Indiana State, the winless Sycamores with two custom guys and Indiana State is going to have a lot of work to do. Uh, usually not a great sign when your punter is the best player and then there's a huge drop off after that. 
uh redmond porter and Braden hauser are both uh two of the better players on this team the second and third best players so obviously starters uh Braden hosen is going to be starting at the strong safety position whereas redmond porter he's going to be starting at the wide receiver position this upcoming season moving on to jacksonville state we got to marcus mcneil at six foot three 225 got some good size on him and you know should get some early looks at the middle linebacker position part of a smaller class for jacksonville state they only signed 13 players this past season 21 seniors so a lot of experience on this team uh despite that demarcus mcneil does have an opportunity to contribute early for the gamecocks up next we have the main back player bears with two custom guys one of which uh, gonna be front and center early flash williams the true freshman gonna be starting for this main program in what is a very difficult acc uh he's gonna definitely uh he is a little bit more college ready uh, his awareness isn't bad for a true freshman uh he just isn't mobile just more of that prototypical nfl quarterback uh, that kind of build we'll see if he you know develops into that uh but could be some growing pains for uh main in that regard but at the defensive side of the football though we do also have will smith the third a guy who is a 65 overall but is going to be expected to be the number one corner gonna have some challenges in that conference i mean taking on you know maurice gray you know those type of caliber receivers um He's going to be thrown to the fire and we're going to see you know how he handles that extremely quickly if he's ready for that or not as for mcneese state there will be a new man at quarterback after stacy Respiris graduated kenny white is going to be the starting quarterback for the cowboys at six foot four 209 pounds comes in as 72 overall a little bit of a qb competition between him and alfred christensen but it is kenny white who is going to looks like win it out because uh, he does have a more understanding of the playbook uh, so might be a two quarterback system but it is leaning towards Kenny White for Mississippi Valley State they end up with three separate guys uh, custom recruits that are on this team uh, do have Kyle Benson the true freshman uh, who's going to be playing alongside Zach Quinn who should be a good role model you know who played himself as a true freshman uh, so these two uh could make a really interesting duo uh here in the future uh jonathan thousand is also on here as well the left guard uh, gonna be starting on that offensive line to try to provide some protection for this quarterback uh who not a non-custom uh but he is a decent player uh brandon mccoy true freshman um so there's that and then andrew barry uh looking to be that number two wide receiver early comes in as a 70 overall with decent speed to work with as well next we have the montana grizzlies who made it all the way to the semifinals last year they do have one custom guy and don patro alexander who will be the tr starter at that tight end position this upcoming season for the murray state racers we have seth randolph who will be slated in as the number two corner early but watch out for him to be an insane return man he comes in with 99 speed that is absolutely special i don't think i've ever seen that before in any game but i guess it's a little bit more common in ncaa 06 could be an electric player to watch this year for north carolina a t they have one custom guy themselves dante randolph part of 17 freshmen that will be joining the team this year going to be the number one wide receiver off rip carrying a height of six foot and 195 pounds as for nicole state we have two customs that are going to be a future duo to watch out for frederick mcnair is going to be the starting quarterback off rip it's going to have guys like travis atkins who is a second team all american and also a solid blocker in quinn hardy but you also have deuce randolph to run the football with as well so a nice one two punch there to go ahead and you know maybe see nicole state take that next step as for norfolk state we'll have a new man at the starting quarterback position and that is pj mcnair who did end up winning the quarterback battle against philip wazario and chris robertson looking for 
to see McNair start for the Spartans of Norfolk State. As for the University of North Dakota, they also have a man at the quarterback position. Octavian Kador, part of five freshmen that were brought in for the quarterback position. Uh, Octavian Kador finished in second, so he'll at least appear on the depth chart, but will not be starting right away. Now, North Dakota State, of course, you know, we know that they have a really talented roster. They got a lot of talent on this team. But one person to definitely watch out for is Laron Montez. If he gets the football, watch out. And I expect him to, you know, not only get it in the receiving game, but also in that running game as well. As Aurora Montez, he simply built different. As for the University of Northeastern, we have Robert Gordon as a custom. He's going to be the best offensive lineman, and he's going to have the responsibility to protect the blind side of Ken Colvin who is a senior impact player for the Huskies of Northeastern. Moving on to Northwestern State now, we have two custom guys here. We have Matthew Gravy, who is a defensive tackle, coming in at 6'4", 268 pounds, and going to be expected to start on that defensive line uh, day one. At the tight end position as well, another starter. We have Aiden Rose uh, taking the place of a, I guess, preferred walk-on in Keon Moore. Uh, Aiden Rose also expected to start day one for the Devils. We now move in on the home of Omaha Stakes, the Omaha uh, Mavericks. And Omaha is going to have a new man at starting quarterback, Blank Snow, 6 foot, 193 pounds. Going to be thrown into that fire early as none of these other uh, players uh, really distinguished himself. Blake knows uh, above the rest, but going to have his work cut out for him. Speaking of quarterbacks, though, we got DeMarco Wilson, who actually nearly unseeds an impact player. Kevin Parquak, he I did check the depth chart. He is still going to be starting, but if Parquak gets hurt or if he struggles early, Look for DeMarco Wilson to make his debut, looking to turn around this Princeton program and maybe lead them to a couple of playoff appearances in the process. Maintaining the run on quarterback zone, we got John Johnson, the true freshman for the Richmond Spiders. Going to be beginning as the backup. He is better than Johnny Smith, but John Atkins is ahead of him right now, so probably a couple years to sit as he is a sophomore redshirt. And I don't expect him leaving early to try his hand at professional sports anytime soon. Over at Sacramento State, we got Tyler Murray at 6'4", 210 pounds. He's going to be backing up for the Hornets early as he is sitting behind fellow freshman Corey Hall. For Sam Houston State, though, we have Craig Gregg. So two first names, uh between the last name and, and the actual first name. Uh, he is going to be playing at wide receiver at 6'1 and 185 pounds for the Bearcats of uh, Sam Houston State. He's going to be starting as the number three receiver uh, looking to contribute for that team early. As for South Carolina State, though, we got Trent Williams, the true freshman at middle linebacker, expected to be you know, leading this defense day one. He has the talent. We'll see if he can live up to that potential, though. Moving on to the Southern Jaguars, though. We got two custom guys. One of which, if you guys remember, happened to be the number one player in this high school class. He was replaced by Justin Jones. Gonna be, you know, really sitting as an opportunity to sit behind Mike Hill, who is a second-team all-conference guy. Very talented. But Justin Jones... 88 speed to work with he's an athlete so even though he's seen as the backup quarterback he could be somebody that can come out here and contribute right away maybe not only at that quarterback position but also line up at receiver or db wherever there is a need of uh, justin jones looking to see how he contributes as the number one player in high school football at the cornerback position, we have a guy by the name Zoo Animal. He is going to be the number one corner as well. 5'11 and 187 pounds. Going to be paired up with the junior impact guy, David Taylor, who's going to be providing some pretty good mentorship this upcoming season. 
Moving on to Tennessee State in what is a pretty good looking roster overall. Got a couple of custom players that are going to be existing on this team. At running back, we got Shamrock, who is going to be a little bit buried on the depth chart, but should get his chance eventually as there are uh they're all juniors and seniors ahead of him he'll eventually get a shot but will probably get red shirt this upcoming season as for the cornerback position though marcellus wallace will likely get some early playing time though so was listed as the number three corner you can expect to see him in those nickel packages as for tennessee martin their rivals they have one custom guy as well chris gentry who is going to be the best not only a freshman wide receiver on this team, but he's going to be the best freshman or best offensive player, period, on this team. He's going to be expected to carry a heavy load for this offense early. We'll see if he's capable of doing that. He does have a good deal of talent, and he's going to be fun to watch regardless. For the Texas State Bobcats, we have Mitchell McJones, who is an 80 overall guy. Also extremely athletic, 89 speed, so he can contribute in ways other than being quarterback because there is an impact player at quarterback, you know, sitting ahead of him, Daryl Walker. Uh, he's pretty good at slinging the football. We, we did done see that. Uh, senior redshirt, though, so, you know, maybe we'll see a little bit Mitchell McDones uh, at quarterback this year before he takes over as a sophomore. Now, University of Missouri in Kansas City also got themselves a custom player. Going to be part of a bigger rebuilding effort for the Kangaroos, as not only did they finish with one of the worst records at 1 in 10, but also the worst recruiting class. Uh, one bright spot that I'm going to be excited for, though, is JJ Mathis, part of 15 freshmen that are going to be on this team, uh, tied with Tom May as the highest rated freshman on the squad. Going to be responsible for for starting at that right outside linebacker position. Moving on now to Western Kentucky where we have Zachary Davis as a custom player, the six foot seven, 290 pound guy who of course is a true freshman, uh, should be starting at that tackle position and he is. Uh, Zachary Davis gonna be on that left hand side with Dwayne Clark probably slide, sliding over to the right. Uh, Zachary Davis, he's gonna be responsible for protecting that blind side. As for Youngtown State, we got two custom players, four of the Penguins who just narrowly missed out on the FCS playoffs last year. Uh, they barely missed out on the top 25. They're just, they're they're good, but not great. At least not yet, right? But Oshaya Jackson Jr., he's a true freshman. He is going to be uh, backing up for Andre Downing, who is a junior red shirt at the quarterback position. Uh, Oziah Jackson is not that mobile though. Um, he's more of that prototypical quarterback. So it will definitely be good for him to sit for a little bit and, you know, just to catch up to the speed of the college game. But I am excited about his potential though. Don't get me wrong about that. And then over at the outside linebacker position, we got Charles Fousen, who is the only freshman outside linebacker uh, on this roster. And he's going to be the best outside linebacker on this roster. Should be starting day one with maybe Craig Franklin uh, sliding over to the right-hand side. Wrapping up this group, though, we got James Madison. Now, James Madison's got a couple of custom guys right now. One of the best players on this team, though, is Jody Gentry, true freshman, 6'5", and is also a 94 speed guy, so expect, expect him to have an impact on the return game, uh, whether it be for kick returns or for punt returns uh in this season even if he might uh he could see the field uh at wide receiver as a starter uh but we'll have to wait and see uh, how that turns out uh maurice gray is not going to be unseated uh, so we'll have to fight with uh fellow freshman david Forn on that uh but for wide another wide receiver to watch out for on this james madison team jonathan henderson five foot eleven 170 pounds gonna be the number four wide receiver to start this season uh, also carries a good deal of talent. Uh, seems to work really well as a slot guy. We'll see if he, you know, molds himself into that role for this team because James Madison, a very young wide receiver room, and as you can see, filled with plenty of talent. And the last custom player that I wanted to talk to you guys about is Carson Ragsdale, true freshman, 80 overall. He is going to be the new face of this Jack Rabbits program as we are looking at a guy 
he was also a number one quarterback, I believe, uh, at his position. I'll have to take a look at that offseason video again. But number one quarterback in college football or high school football. He signs with South, South Dakota State. He is not only the best player at the quarterback position for them, but he is the best player, period, for them. And he's going to be responsible for, you know, taking South Dakota State, building them up, and try to get them into the playoffs as they struggled last year, only 4-7. and seven. So next episode, we will kick off year number two with some week one action, and we will have a couple of games on tap. Starting off in the next episode, we will have North Dakota State, a top five preseason team, go on the road to play up against Mid-Tennessee State, who, listen, Mid-Tennessee State last year started off as a top 10 team and then fell all the way out to the unranks. So Mid-Tennessee State, they got to work themselves back a little bit. Should be an interesting game as both teams are, you know, pretty evenly matched, it seems like. Both have C overall uh, offense and defenses. Uh, North Dakota State a little bit better. So we'll see how the Bison handle that uh, for which actually is the game of the week as well. And then the other game that I'm going to be kind of interested to see is Princeton versus Southern Utah. That is the other game that's going to be shown in that next episode. Princeton, of course, they have they are tied for the longest losing streak in this series so far. 11 game losing streak. They do have some new uniforms, though, uh, courtesy of the NCAA 06 next guys. Uh, but they go on the road to play against a Southern Utah team, which not the most talented, but they finished the year strong last year. They ended up finishing on a two game winning streak. They start this year off at home as well. And honestly, one of the coolest names, I think, in this series, they're called the Thunderbirds. I really rock with that name. But those are the two games that are going to be shown in the next episode. And I hope you guys are excited for it. If you are, make sure you go ahead, smack that like button for me, hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel. This is John Jake Gaming on the mic, signing off, hoping that you're all out there, having a good one, take care everybody.